Hello and welcome to tonight's book reading session of Preparing for the Day After, a picture e-book. Preparing for the Day After is a photojournalistic treatise on disaster mitigation published by me, Malini Shankar and Walter Keller for the 10th anniversary of the Asian tsunami. Tonight we will start with the subchapter on hailstorms in chapter 22, Hydrometeorological Disasters and Understanding El Nino Induced Calamity. But let us first recap what we have learnt in the previous book reading session before we start tonight's session. Water and sanitation is central to developmental discourse. Culture sensitive food security also has evolved out of local agrometeorological conditions prevalent in an area. Livelihoods based on agrometeorological conditions prevalent is the, in the area is the best means of livelihood security. Climate change adaptation, menstrual hygiene, especially for indigenous tribal women, solid waste management, universal health care access, sustainable development goals, they are all factors to be included in the development agenda. Media personnel have to be trained in reporting disaster preparedness or the lack of it at district level. Disaster is the impact of a calamity on the human landscape. This includes the impact on lives, livelihoods, livestock and landscape. Tonight, we will restart with the subchapter on hailstorm. Climate change is not a watershed event like say the Asian tsunami for instance. Unless we have a huge super volcano has global impact and can lead to an ice age overnight. The Anthropocene version of climate change is triggered by anthropogenic factors like industrial pollution and unsustainable human development far in excess of other natural geological causes and cycles. Climate change manifests as an increase in the intensity of extreme weather events. So you have more frequent avalanches and blizzards in colder climes, more precipitation or less precipitation, more and intense cyclones, cloudbursts, coastal incursion, desertification, droughts, epidemics, flash floods floods, famine, fog, forest fires, global warming, hailstorms, mudslides, landslides, fog, few, forest fires, storms, sea level rise, iceberg belt, triggered tsunamis and so on. Each of these extreme weather events can have colossal impact on human communities. The consequences include food and livelihood insecurity, lack of shelter causing more imbalanced fiscal growth, Skewed fiscals include impaired tax regimes, impact on public health like COVID-19 has shown us, impact on international trade and commerce, tax, aviation, shipping, public health, human development and so on. Today let me read to you about hailstorm and its impact. This year we have witnessed something close to a super volcano. The Tonga volcano although not classified as super volcano yet has come close to it when it erupted from undersea between the 13th and the 15th of January 2022 in the island nation of Tonga in the South Pacific Ocean. It was so powerful an explosion that it triggered Pacific wide tsunamis of the, of the height of 60 feet. Its explosion surpassed the speed of sound and reverberated across the globe four times over. The, the atmospheric pressure it created triggered more tsunamis, new research has revealed. This, and it also created a La Nina in its way. This cycle of three consecu consecutive La Nina cycles has straddled the stratosphere and triggered a third La Nina, all three of which have lasted close to seven years since 2015. In the normal course of events or weather cycles, El Nino and La Nina alternate, but maybe thanks to climate change or weather cycle or the Godzilla. El Nino of 2015, which was in itself triggered by the sea mount called uh, Havre in the extreme southwest of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, there have been three continuous high cycles of La Nina. This means there is a there is thrice the amount of humidity and heat induced moisture in the atmosphere because El Nino is dry and uh, La Nina is moist and humid. It has, however, not translated to super abundant monsoons for the Indian Ocean Rim countries. Hence, it is quintessential to subtract El Nino and La Nina cycles from long-term climate change adaptation. Sorry, climate change documentation. The Havre supervolcano of 2014 was apparently so powerful that it exploded a bed of sand and deposited it on the ocean surface in South Pacific. Some of the pictures are there, it's coming. It was an unprecedented scientific spectacle in the history of humankind. How these sea mounts trigger La Nino and El Nino, La Nina and El Nino, causing hail in the Indian Ocean Rim countries or worldwide for that matter, is a subject that needs far more serious engagement, forecast and research preparedness because it has the potential to affect agriculture negatively the world over. Whether sea mount activity can cause hydrometeorological disasters like hail, 
flash floods, mudslides, fog or famine in a hemisphere or worldwide needs urgent research backed administrative act coming back to hailstorms. They are a feature of late summer and beginning of monsoon. Hailstorms are normally associated with pre-monsoon thunderstorms when the temperatures after peak summer climb down to herald the monsoon. The potential damage to crops in hailstorms make it potent disasters worldwide. Hail or hailstorms are made up of water, ice and can be of any size. It can be measured anything from 5 millimeters to, to 200 millimeters. That's the, uh, the caldera of the Tonga super volcano which erupted and collapsed into this. Hail is part of weather cycles but unseasonal hailstorms can be ruinous on agriculture. This was the picture taken by NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration and it shows pumice raft or sand deposited on the surface of the ocean. It's an amazing spectacle. So quite like volcanoes regulate climate change in the long term, hailstorms herald change in temperature and regulate the onset of monsoons. It also regulates the transition from the cool to the warm ambient temperatures. This has been assimilated by human beings to serve the cause of agriculture. Crop rotation synchronizes with the end of one season, so to say. I will read, about, read out some perspectives from German climate change strategies to start off. Quote, extreme weather events such as drought, hailstorm, storm, heavy rain, flooding, frost and winter related damage can cause yield losses, crop yield losses in agriculture. Typically, the insurance of policy covers only damage from hailstorms. Increases in claims expenditure are essentially caused by increases in the amounts insured. Claims ratio figures make it possible to infer more direct conclusions regarding hailstorm events. These figures show a falling trend. As a result of weather extremes, Germany's plant production has again suffered some considerable yield crop yield losses in the course of recent years. As indicated by a study carried out by the GDV, that is, regarding insurance for agricultural multiple risks called that is an insurance against agricultural risks for Germany. Annual harvest losses and caused by weather related risks in Germany amounted to some 510 million euros per annum. The bulk of yield losses was attributed to various levels of drought. Approximately a fifth of the damage was caused by hail stone, stones as against a sixth caused by storm, heavy rain or flooding. Frosts too left a legacy of damage. If extreme events increase as a result of climate change, agriculture will have its fair share of harvest damage or harvest losses. The drought summer of 2018 has demonstrated that the average yield losses mentioned above can be much more severe. Protracted drought and heat caused harvest damage and yield losses amounting to 770 million euros. The affected farms were at least in part compensated for these losses by the state. Like mentioned earlier, hailstorm in the summer or at the end of summer is part of the weather cycle. That's the normal. But if, if it falls unseasonably at the end of winter or the start of autumn, it affects crop yield. Crop insurance is the means for disaster risk reduction then. Hailstorm can affect crop yield both in tropical and temperate zone countries. It does have a direct impact on food security, especially for the poorer sections of society. Agricultural traditions help in coping mechanisms. Food stocks and food exports suffer affecting tax regimes and incomes for the governments as well as the farming communities. Unseasonal hail can wash out cash crops having a debilitating impact on farmers of cash crops like coffee, cashews, mangoes, other horticultural crops like seasonal fruits, vegetables and agricultural yield itself. Hail or not, we are see seeing in recent weeks a food security crisis uh, triggered by the Ukrainian war. Thanks to the war in Ukraine, wheat production and export have been affected. With non-tariff trade barriers coming in through sanctions against Russia, wheat exports have been affected for Ukraine thanks to the Black Sea and the Straits of Bosphorus becoming another war horizon. Thanks to the shortage in wheat supplies globally, India banned wheat export recently, further debilitating wheat supplies. It prompted the International Monetary Fund to urge India to reconsider wheat export ban. Climate change is heralding more seasons of warm temperatures and pre-monsoon showers are more intense than monsoonal showers itself. It can create mayhem on seasonal crops like the rabi crops, mustard, beet, winter vegetables, fruits and so on. Let me picturize this for you. Hailstorm or hail shower in February will ruin the crop yield of mustard, rapeseed, 
some other oil seeds, chickpeas, wheat, cauliflower, broccoli, potatoes, strawberry, cabbage, carrots, beet, peas, lentils, brussels sprouts, etc. Some varieties of rice are also grown in winter in the crop. A shower of hail in early or late winter destroys the crop yield completely. When hail destroys food security crops like wheat, it has global repercussions. As agricultural trade is affected by imbalanced supply and demand as the recent Ukrainian war example illustrates. Take another example, Vietnam. Vietnam is blessed with both southwest and northeast monsoons, quite like India. Vietnam enjoys a very vast and fertile delta of the Mekong and the Red Rivers. Consequently, Vietnam is the fifth largest producer of rice and is also blessed with 12 months of mangoes of all varieties. I have shown some varieties of mangoes here. Vietnamese coffee is legion indeed. Soybean, cashews, many varieties of short and long corn rice, fruits and vegetables have made Vietnam very prosperous in the field of agricultural exports. But Vietnam is also very vulnerable to typhoons from the Pacific Ocean between July and December. Ferocious storms are the biggest threat to agricultural produce in Vietnam. Nascent crop or newly planted saplings like ragi in India, for instance, cannot withstand hail lashings on the one hand, but limited bouts of unseasonal rain can complement irrigation infrastructure. Almost all Southeast Asian countries are influenced by both Southwest and Northeast monsoon cycles. Excuse me. Repeat. Almost all Southeast Asian countries are influenced by both Southwest and Northeast monsoon cycles and the influence of ocean currents and the Indian Ocean Dipole. Quote, ASEAN is one of the most productive agricultural baskets in the world. In 2012, the region produced 129 million tons of rice, 40 million tons of corn, 171 million tons of sugarcane, 1.44 million tons of soybean, and 70.34 million tons of cassava. Rice production this year is forecast to increase by about 3% to 132.87 million tons, says the site ASEAN Investment. This link will be put up here as well as in the description box below. The guidelines are part of a broad range of ASEAN initiatives aimed at promoting responsible and sustainable investment in food, agriculture and forestry to help achieve food and nutrition security and create economic growth and opportunities while responding to the global challenge of climate change. Food stocks are thus a critical means of combating food insecurity. But corruption in food storage is the bane of food security. Thus, disaster mitigation is stalled or hackneyed in India. Recently, we have seen how corruption has ruined not just food stocks in Sri Lanka, but Sri Lanka has also run out of fuel supply. This has tripled energy supply in Sri Lanka, stalling the entire country's economy. Climate change thus affects livelihood security in the field of agriculture too. Crop insurance has so far been the best means of disaster mitigation in the amphitheater of climate change impacted agriculture. Climate change primarily affects agriculture by way of land degradation. Crop insurance has so far been the best means of disaster mitigation in the amphitheater of climate change impacted agriculture. Climate change primarily affects agriculture by way of land degradation. Agroforestry is the key to combating desertification, sandstorms and other extreme weather events. At a global level, climatic shocks impacting areas of global importance for food supplies can have remote impacts through effects on 1. Supply flows and food price spike with increased market volatility and the impacts on bilateral contracts and or import and export behavior with disruption of trade patterns. Food price volatility is likely to be exacerbated by climate change. Trade is expected to play a major role in adjusting to climate change driven shifts in agricultural and food production patterns. Recent experience indicates that climate change effects on food price volatility are greatly influenced by domestic policies with export bans contributing to price fluctuations. Ultimately, global markets will not be accessible to the poorest countries and the poorest populations without sufficient purchasing power. So that's it in tonight's lecture on hailstorm. And the book reading has more or less come to an end. In the next chapter, in the next week's episode, I will be doing or reading out a scrutiny of the and practicality of the policy guidelines and um, legislation. We will understand also the practical loopholes in the implementation of guidelines and re legislative resilience. And with that, we will be ending the book reading. After that, however, I will do four more episodes of just slideshows on topics like 
mudslides, sea level rise, coastal incursion, and volcanic perspective of climate change. I think that's the most. There will be no book reading after next week. After these four slideshows, I will have one interactive episode by going live to facilitate interaction. And after that, it will mark the end of the book reading of preparing for the day after. Take care, keep smiling, stay home, and stay safe. Ciao!